is Kayline, and today I will be teaching you how to text while not getting caught. All right, guys, uh, take out your notebooks and write these notes down. Alex, put that phone away before I take it away. Hey Eric, bro, you got any cologne I can use? Yeah, I think it's probably from over there. having problems. I'm sorry, do you want to talk about it? Not really, I'm sorry. It's okay, don't worry about it.
In the foothills of Africa's fourth largest mountain, a group of Christian, Jewish, and Muslim coffee farmers affirmatively decided to marry peaceful interrelationships with economic development. Delicious peace grows in a Ugandan coffee bean tells their story. We delight in the smell of the brew. We drink it to start the day when we meet friends. Yet as we hand our dollars to our vendors, we rarely think about the farmers who are our partners in supplying our caffeine libation. In the global world of commodities, coffee takes second place only to petroleum. The farmers of Delicious Peace Coffee Co-op are a testament to this mutually beneficial relationship, which they have enhanced by adding the requirement of peace. One day you could be a hero because you take the Wally home, and next day you could be a zero because you got taken out first round or you didn't qualify for a race. But there's nothing like being out there on that start line when it's side by side. You know, two of you going at it, trying to win. It's the greatest feeling in the world. I think the drag racer is, is really a different breed, you know, and I think there's a lot of different things that attract you to the sport, whether you've just grown up around it or whether you were exposed to it at a later age. But the breed of the drag racer is, is someone that loves the adrenaline rush and, and to some degree that has no fear because this is, this is not like jumping out of a plane. This is the evidence, the motions and other detritus of justice that they have filed over the years, chronicling a litany of petty complaints that have made their way into my courtroom. Their parking space dispute will not join them. Yes, sir. I will get on this. It's on the schedule for tomorrow, 9 a.m. What? 9 a.m. Judge, they're clearly playing out some relationship mess through the courts. Uh, you, you, you can't give me one day to fix this. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Tomorrow morning, two miles offshore, I'm having a ceremony for my dad. I'm scattering his ashes at sea. I, I do have a permit from the Coast Guard. Your dad was a great man. Thank you, sir. Mm. So, can't I have a little bit more time? No. I, come on! You can do this, probably. Well, if I can't, you're not throwing me in jail. You keep telling yourself that. One day, I just got tired of things people said. I began to drift away. I'd tune out. I began to think all the time. I was in a world all my own, my own thoughts, 
unsullied by the opinions of others. Inevitably, one thought would lead to another. And soon, I was more than just a social thinker. I began to think alone. To relax, I said to myself, but I knew it wasn't true. Thinking became more and more important to me. And finally, I was thinking all the time. 